Dr. Agusia, everything that you were saying sounds pretty clinical, not very romantic. So give us some romance, <laughs> please. <laughs> well, I am a scientist after all, so I'm going to approach the thing first of all psychologically and, and within a scientific framework. But um, I was also an English literature minor in college. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I, I don't think we can abandon love to science alone. I think human beings are, in some sense, more than a sum of their parts. And I think, you know, er, there have been writers that have talked about love for as long as there's been writing. Um, you know, Shakespeare said, if, if uh, love be the, no, if love be, what was it? The passion, passion be the food of love, play on, something like that. <laughs> and, and Shakespeare talked about love in so many sonnets, in so many plays. Um, the person who, for me, uh, said the most profound things in literature about love was a guy named Cahil Gabran, who was a Lebanese mystic. Um, and uh, he wrote a book called The Prophet. Actually, he wrote about 10 different volumes. Um, very bright guy, but the, the, and a great writer. And The Prophet was his work of genius. And um, it is now in its, I think, 116th printing. Um, uh, it's, it's been around for almost a hundred years now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would encourage people to read it, to buy it mm -hmm. and read it. It's a wonderful book of, of great wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, Gabran in the book has a prophet who is talking to the community. Mm -hmm. And he tells them things. And somebody says, speak to us of love. And this is what he says. And I'm going to read this to you. Okay. okay? okay. He says, when love beckons to you, follow him, though his ways are hard and steep. And when his wings enfold, you yield to him, though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you. And when he speaks to you, believe in him, though his voice may shatter your dreams, as the north wind lays waste the garden. For even as love crowns you, so shall he crucify you. Even as he is for your growth, so he is for your pruning. Even as he ascends to your height and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun, so shall he descend on your roots and shake them in their clinging to the earth. All these things shall love do unto you, that you may know the secrets of your heart, and in that knowledge become a fragments of life's heart. But if in your fear you would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure, then it is better for you to cover your nakedness and pass, and pass out of love's threshing floor into the seasonless world where you shall laugh but not all of your laughter and weep but not all of your tears. Love gives naught but itself and takes naught but from itself. Love possesses not nor would it be possessed for love is sufficient unto love. When you love, you should say not, God is in my heart, but rather I'm in the heart of God. And think not that you can direct the course of love, for love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. I love it, Dr. Ragusi. I want to pick up my copy of The Prophet right now. <laughs> it's beautiful, and I, it's so true. It is. I agree. So when did you read your first the first time you read first the time I read the mm -hmm. prophet was probably in college mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or maybe high school something like that and what did you think and about I've, that passage do you agree with everything I, I, in it I, oh absolutely mm -hmm. I'm profoundly moved by it mm -hmm. and he talks you want me to read about marriage he also talks about marriage mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, I'll read you a short section on a marriage he says on marriage you were born together and together you shall be forevermore you shall be together when the white wings of death scatter your days I you shall be together even in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness, and let the winds of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give one another of your bread, but not eat from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone even as the strings of a lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music. Give your hearts, but not into each other's keeping, for only the hand of life can contain your hearts. And stand together, yet not too near together, 
for the pillars of the temple stand apart, and the oak tree and the cypress grow not in each other's shadow. I love that too. Very wise man who wrote this. Yep, buy it. <laughs> I, Read it. <laughs> I Put it on your Kindle. Now, if we all read it, would we have more marriages that lasted? I think so. Mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think that if people read the prophet and understood the wisdom in it, it's, it's the most religious, non-religious book I've ever read. Mm -hmm. um, it contains as much wisdom as any other book I've ever seen. It's very short. It's mm -hmm. only a, a very small, thin volume, about that mm -hmm. big. And it's full of these mystical drawings that he had as visions um, as a mystic. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very interesting. Well, I'm glad that we had happier subjects to talk about this yeah, morning. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, happy Valentine's Day to you, too. And Dr. Ragusea, we'll have to pick up this talk, though, on love and marriage, because I know there's so much more that yeah. we could talk about at a later date. So thanks for being back on, and I'm going to take a quick break right now, but I'll be right back with the Valentine's Day talk when I return. <laughs>